My name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. We're located in Northeast Florida. And what I wanted to do for, for this video blog is I wanted to do a little bit of an update on the last one I did. Now, the last one I did, if you didn't take a look, it's about the patch command. And the patch command shows you how you can make a brand new record or update a record. And if you didn't see that yet and you're interested in it, take a look at the link down below and, and take a look at that video. But in this one, what we're going to do is go a little bit further and a little bit more advanced. Because when you use the patch command, you're going to have to do a little bit extra if you notice some things that you don't like about it. So let's just go take a look at the app that we are working with and let's talk about what we don't like and how we can fix it. So as we take a look at the app, the old way, or not necessarily the old way of doing things, is a lot of people will, you know, this is all my records I'm in a SharePoint list just to get you familiar with the data. SharePoint list, have a title column, which is the name of a person, favorite color, date, if they're a cat or dog person, favorite number. And what most people will do when they want to make new records is they put in a form. So if I go to new record, this is just the standard form that comes with um, uh, the Power Apps itself. You fill in everything you want. You click submit record and boom, it's there. However, what some people don't like about that is when you do a form, you can't just drag and drop things wherever you want to. Uh, the forms have a very rigid layout. Now you can change the number of columns and if you want it to be vertical or horizontal, but other than that, that's all you can do. However, with the patch command, what you can do is you can put anything you want anywhere. And these are just all input controls. And I went over how to do this in my last video. And you can put these wherever you want on your screen. You're not putting in a form. They are just separate text inputs, as well as other input controls, date pickers, lists, drop downs, etc. And then on your submit button, you put uh, for the on select property, you put over here, let's take a look at it, you put in this patch command. And so again, if you're not sure what all this patch command means, take a look at that other video. But here's what I want to go further with. As we use this in the last video, let's take a look at some of the issues that I think we need to fix. So first off, what I don't like right now is someone can hit the submit record button and it's going to submit this record without anything in the name or in the favorite color box. I don't like that. So that's one thing we're going to fix. Here's the other thing I don't like about it. So let's put in here, I'll put in my name this time. We'll go Matt. Uh, and let's say we're going to go for the 7th of January. I'm a dog person and favorite color is blue. So now when I click on submit record, everything is good. Matt, blue, dog person, great. Now let's do another record. So let's go do a new record with our patch command. Ugh, don't like this. See right here, it still has my old values. Now on a form, it's really easy to get rid of the old values. We have a function called after you submit, it says reset the form and all of the old values are taken out. This is one of the drawbacks with patch. So let me show you today how you can fix this with just one line of code. So the first thing we're going to do is let's fix the fact that we don't want these columns to be pre-filled out. So if I come over to my input for my name right here, and so it currently says Matt because that was the very last thing that I had typed in. And if I go to the default text, we're going, well, wait, the default text for this currently says that it's supposed to be a null blank value, which it is the very first time you open the app. But every time after that, as you're using it, it never goes to that. So what we have to do is we have to force the input to be blank every time we get to this screen. And the way we're going to do that, and if you've watched my pop-up screens uh, video before how to get a pop-up screen to show up, you might have an idea we're going to use a variable. So let's see how we can use a variable to actually fill this in to be completely blank anytime someone comes to this screen. So what we will do is we're going to come to the screen of patch record. This is what this screen is called. And we're going to go to the on visible property, which is going to say, hey, when someone gets to this screen, what do you want to happen? Well, I want to declare a variable. And the way we declare a variable just for one screen only is we use the function update context. And what update context does is it creates basically a variable in the background for you. And so the way that you do this is a little bit, you have, this is the one part of the, the coding of Power Apps. You have to know a little bit of the syntax. When you update a context, you have to start it off with a fancy bracket, as my algebra students call it, or a curly brace. And now you put in what you want it to be. So I'm going to do VAR because I think it's easy to declare these with a VAR. You do not by any means have to do VAR for this to work. 
That's just the way I like to name mine. I like to put that in front. And now I'm going to say, what do I want this to be? This is going to be my default text. All right, so that's what I'm going to name it. Now I just have to put what's the value of this default text. The value is going to be an empty string. So I'm just going to do two double quotes. And so it says, OK, we're going to put the empty string of text in for this record. So anytime that you reference this on this screen, it's going to be an empty uh, text string, which is fantastic. That's what I want. So let's close it off. And I'll put a parentheses around it. And now everything is almost good to go. What we've done is when we get to this screen now, this code is going to run. This variable is going to sit out in the background and saying, hey, I'm just an empty string. All we have to do now is tell our inputs the default text of our name and our favorite color to not just be the default of the double quotes. We're going to say, use the variable. So let's take a look at how we do that. When we come over here to our name, currently the default is just an empty string, which is good, but that's only done once in the program. We need this to happen every single time we get to this screen. So I'm going to say, I always want the default text to be the var default text. And notice right away, it's now completely blank. Excellent. I like what I'm seeing here. Let's go to the favorite color of blue. Let's do the same thing. I want the default text for the favorite color blue of my text input to be that variable. So I'm going to say var default text. So let's see if this actually works the way that we want it to work. So we're going to come over here. We're going to hit the play button. Let's put in a new record. So we're going to go with Molly. Uh, we're going to put a date of the 9th. We're going to say she is a dog person and her favorite color is green. So I'm going to submit the record. There we go. Favorite color green. Great. Now, remember last time we did this, when I went to new record with patch, it kept my old values. What should happen is when I get to this screen, that variable code runs and it says, oh, there's now a variable that equals blank text. And those two input boxes are referencing that. So that should be blank text. So let's see if that actually works. New record with patch. Yes, it worked. Perfect. Fantastic. So option number one, we're, we're done with the thing we didn't like, how it had the pre-filled values in. We figured out how to get rid of them. Now let's deal with the second issue that we have that I don't want somebody to actually submit a record with no data. So for example, just watch what happens. If I hit submit record, it submitted a record. Just there's no name, no color. It was defaulted to dog. I definitely don't want that. So here's how we're going to fix that. We're going to come over into our screen. Let's get out of the preview here. And we'll come down to our screen patch record. And this is good anytime that you want something to not show. Um, we can do an if statement here. So I'm going to come to my submit record button and I want to go to the display mode because the display mode is what allows this button to actually work. So if the display mode is edit, that means someone can actually click on the button. If it's disabled, that means it's going to be grayed out and you can't click on it. So what is it that I'm wanting to do here? Well, I want it to be enabled or editable, so to speak, when there is data in the name and in the favorite color. When both of them are blank, I want this to be disabled. So I'm going to set up an if statement. I'm going to say, hey, check those two boxes for me. See if they're both blank. Or actually, see if just one of them is blank. As long as one of them is blank, I don't want anyone to hit this submit button. So as long as one is blank, keep this in the disabled format. If both of them are filled in, then hey, let's go and click on this. So we're going to use an if statement here. So for the display mode, I'm going to come on up. We're going to get rid of this. And the first thing we have to do is start off with an if statement. And I want them to check this text box for the name and see if it is actually blank. So in here, this is my text input. I've named it text input name. And I want to check, is it blank? So there is a function called is blank, which checks is something blank. So we're going to say, go check the text input name. All right. And if it was just one box, what I would do at this point, I would say, OK, if the text input name is blank, which means that would be a that's returning a true statement. If it is currently true that it is blank, then I want the display mode to be disabled. Let's come over here. Let's pick it up. I, I tapped it over too quickly. I want the display mode to be disabled. And it keeps 
do 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 display mode dot disabled there we go and that's what I want display mode dot disabled and then if it's not blank the false statement is then I want it to be display mode dot edit and let's close it off and let's see if that currently works so notice right away it's working let me come over here Notice there's nothing in the name and this is this is disabled. When I come over here and automatically put something in, whoo, now we can submit the record. So again, we can submit that record. Is that what I really want? So if I click submit record, we come down, uh, we don't have anything in the favorite color. So let's make it a little bit better at this point. So we're gonna come back to our screen patch record. We're gonna come to our submit record and we're gonna do one more thing. We also wanna say, hey, anytime the name or the favorite color. So name or favorite color is blank, then make this disabled. And the way we put an or statement in here is we're gonna use the double pipe delimiter. So now it's gonna check two things. And as long as one of those results in a true statement, we're gonna go display mode dot disabled. So here we go, let's zoom on in. So we're gonna, gonna update, we're gonna say check to see if the text input name is blank. Also, we're gonna do an or statement also, I need you to check if another one is blank, which was our text input color. So I want you to check both of those. So now checking both of those, look right away. It's automatically disabled because there's nothing in here. So if we come over and we hit the play button here, so now let's put in a name. So let's say we'll go with, there's an F there, we'll go with Frank. Uh, we'll go with January, let's go back to 2020. Wait, actually, whoever wants to go back to 2020, nobody. Uh, so let's go to January 12th. We'll go with a cat. And again, note so far, nothing's happening here. Favorite color, we're gonna go with brown. Ah, and now it works because what is happening is it did a check. Is this blank? No, so that's false. Is Or is this blank? No, it's false. So this is resulting in a false uh, expression here. And because it's false, what happens is it goes to what do you want to happen if this is false, which is the last thing that we wrote in, which we said is we want it to go into edit mode. So that is a way that you would fix your patch command. Patch command is great, but those are usually two of the issues that I see is people say, well, how do I get those values to go back to completely blank uh, values? So you had to use the update context. We use a variable. Well, how do I make sure that that button isn't active until I want it to be active? We say, okay, check these values, use an if statement, and if any one of these are blank, then we're gonna keep it in the disabled mode. So I hope this helps you out with your patch command. Also, just with your buttons, this is another way that you can even do this on a form where you can reference one of your inputs in a form and say, hey, if this is blank in the form, make my button disabled. So it's not just for the patch command. So I hope this helped you out. Please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what else you would like for me to talk about in Power Apps uh, because I love doing this every week. Have a great one and I'll see you in the next video.